Happy Monday, everyone. I hope you're having a great start of your week. I am super excited for today's live stream because I've never really done anything like this before. So, give me a second. Okay, so for those of you who have never seen my face before, or perhaps you are new to the group, or maybe you've seen me before but you forget what I do. My name is Barbara Juliano and I am a business and confidence coach for new coaches. I help new coaches get confident, get clients, and make money doing what they love. So I come in this group every single Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern and I give you a business lesson that I think will help you grow your business. And every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern, I do live free confidence and business coaching. So make sure that you're in this land, you have your notifications on and you're always hopping in because there's definitely, definitely a lot of value here. Today, I'm going to talk about 10 different ways in which my clients have easily book paying clients. Honestly, one of the most asked questions that I get is how do you book clients? What is your client acquisition process? What is your sales process? Like it is honestly, I get asked this all the time. Um, and I love it. Like I don't mind answering this question. I have no problem with this question whatsoever. But the only thing that I don't like about it is that it leaves you with the misconception that my way is the only way or that you have to do what I do or like whatever. And that's just not true. There are so many ways to book clients, whether you're online or offline. Um, the client acquisition process can look in, like completely different for everyone. And as a matter of fact, all my clients are so different in their own unique ways. So I figure it would be good and beneficial for you to hear different stories of how different um, 10 different clients of mine have booked paying clients so that you can see that there's more than one way. And now it's a matter of figuring out which way is going to work for you. And by the way, I'm only sharing 10 stories. I have so many more and there are so many more ways, but at least this will give you a broad perspective of the possibilities that are out there for you. I remember when I was talking to a colleague of mine, she's like, yeah, I think I'm going to like drop social media marketing. Like I make all my money from my list. And I'm like, that's just not my case at all. Like I think social media works so much better for me than my list, but it's just to give an example that what works for me may not work even for my closest colleague, right? Hi, Stephanie. Welcome. Welcome. If you're hopping live, live say hello. Um, and let's just dive right in into each little uh, client's booking story. Just so you know, though, I've changed the names of the clients just for confidentiality confidentiality purposes. So I'm going to be saying random names, which is going to be kind of weird for me. Um, but these are not the real names. So client number one, she grew her Instagram like crazy and consistently posted vulnerable and real content that her audience loved. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like this client has an audience that loves her on Instagram. After a bit, like after a little bit of time, she actually had people requesting to work with her in the comments in a super popular post that she had. So she had a super popular post in her Instagram and she wasn't even ready to get clients, but because she was so consistent in this platform and she was being so real, people really loved what she was doing. And she actually booked a client before she was quote unquote ready. Hi, Summer. Welcome. Um... Okay, and if you guys have any questions, just pop them in the comments uh, section as well. I don't mind answering those either. Okay, so client numero dos. Um, she grew her Facebook group like crazy and showed up like a true leader nonstop. Okay, so a lot of us like grow our groups a little bit and then we're not showing up in them. But like this client of mine, she grew it and she showed up like crazy. She got a lot of no's, a lot of failed deals, a lot of uh, not successful launches, a lot of people who didn't show up to her discovery calls, but like she never stopped and she decided to take a couple pro bono clients since things weren't working out for her. And as soon as she did this, she finally had the right person hop on the phone 
and book a discovery call and then turn into a paying client. Okay, so I just want to give you also a little bit of the back end story of like, Sometimes it's not just rainbows and roses. Sometimes it's not just what you see of like she grew her Instagram and then she posted like there's a lot that goes in the journey of booking clients and it doesn't have to take forever. It could be a very um, short process, but it could also have a lot of ups and downs in and on the way there. So client number three, um, she really wasn't confident charging high end prices. I always say there are two ways to start your coaching business. You can either start small and build your way up, or you can go all in with high-end prices. And both ways work. I had all kinds of clients approach their business both ways. But this specific client, she wasn't really confident with her high-end prices um, yet. So, but someone really wanted to work with her. So after seeing her post on on her on her social media, she decided to give them a discounted spot and because she decided to do that, it was one of the best decisions that she's ever made for her business. Her words, not mine. <laughs> then, client number four, she focused really hard on lead generation system through LinkedIn. So, I just, I specific client stories that are all different, so you could see that there's not one way to grow your online business, right? So this specific client did amazing. She really focused on that like lead generation process that she had for LinkedIn. Um, she had a whole uh, like cycle in place where she would find people, reach out to them, email them, and she had like numbers put in place where it's like, I'm gonna do this amount of people per day. I'm gonna reach out to this amount of people. I'm gonna send this amount of emails. And from this amount of numbers, a percentage of them convert into a call and from the call a percentage of them convert into a paying client. But really soon after that initial work, she was actually booking consistent clients in her business and people were like recognizing her as the leader in her industry. No Facebook, no Instagram, just so you see that you can do it through so many ways if you put in the good, like a good strategy and you put consistent effort into it and you tweak along the way. Story number five, so, this is my fake name, Katrina. She focused on connecting with a lot of referral partners. So a lot of times we think we, we, we need to do it alone, but if you're a good connector and you really like socializing and making connections, a really good way to book clients is connecting with individuals who are kind of uh, doing what you do, but your topics don't overlap. So you guys don't have the same ideal client. So what you guys do is you become referral partners and when someone goes to that person and that person can't help them, they will send them to you and vice versa. When someone comes to you and you cannot help them, you will send them to your referral partner. I actually do a lot of this with my colleagues because I usually work with early stage and uh, brand new entrepreneurs. So a lot of my colleagues do not do that because it requires a lot more effort, energy, support, consistency like it's a whole different game when you are working with new entrepreneurs so even if i have a business coach who works with more advanced entrepreneurs they will like if we have a referral thing going on they will send the less advanced people to me and i will send the more advanced people to them so like if you're coming to me wanting to scale to 20k a month i have done that myself but i wouldn't that's just not the way I support my clients. You know, there's someone out there that I probably know who I can refer you to who would be able to support you more in that goal. So Stephanie says, for some reason, I'm not following you on this live stream. I can't hear exactly how your clients book clients. Am I the only one? Um, so what do you mean you can't hear? Like, is it like a is it like a sound thing or do you just not understand the stories? Um, obviously, I simplified them and I'm not like going super in depth into it um, because it's 10 stories. I didn't want to make it so long, but I guess I'm just going to keep going and let, let me know um, if I should stop or if I should clarify something. So, okay. And, okay, so... No, that I can't hear in terms of sound. I can't understand the stories. Not that I can't hear. Um, so what exactly don't you understand? 
I guess I could come back and hi Talina, welcome. Welcome, welcome. I'm gonna keep going and if anything, I'll come back for you, Stephanie, okay? And I'll try to be a little bit more clear on them. Maybe I'm going too fast and that happens a lot because I'm Spanish and I speak really fast. So I will slow down, okay? Thank you for telling me. That really, really helps. Okay, so okay, so this it's okay. It's probably just me. I will catch a replay. No, it's definitely not you. I speak really fast. <laughs> so um so referral partners are another way to book clients uh, where you make a connection with someone who does something similar to you but not the exact same thing to you and you guys send clients to each other. Um, this specific client of mine did a lot of that. She did a lot of referral connections that complemented her work and they, they were sending clients to each other and eventually it got to a point where she didn't really have to worry that much about clients because they were just coming to her because of this really good referral connections. This takes a lot of time and effort and consistency to implement and make it happen this way, but it really, really works if you find the right person to do it with and the right way to do it with. Um, okay, this is another way, Laura. So what she was focusing on, she was focusing on connecting with others through other people's Facebook groups. So she was going into the groups and she was pretty much trying to get to know other people, booking connection calls, so she could just, it's kind of like when you do networking offline where you just go up to people and introduce yourself and you just get to know each other a little bit more. That's exactly what she was doing, but in Facebook groups. She didn't really have like a specific strategy at this point. She just literally wanted to build connections. Um, because connections can always turn into so many amazing things. And after doing like about a dozen of connection calls, this one lady told her that she had been following her for a really long time and she would love to know how to work with her um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So they discussed that and then she signed up. Uh, next client, Abigail. So she reached out to past clients to see if they were interested in working together again, and two of them said yes. So a lot of times we think that we need to get new clients, new clients, new clients, and we forget that there's probably, if we've been in business for a little bit, there's probably a lot of people that we can reach out to with new offers or new discounts, or maybe just to follow up and see if they need like a little, like a follow-up program or something like that. Um, which leads me to client number eight. <sighs> This one was a little bit more of like work ahead of time, but it worked really, really well for her. So she launched a summit and she decided, so she launched an entire summit. Um, and after the summit, she got a lot of people into her list. And after she built her list and she built a connection through the summit, what she did was anyone who answered a questionnaire in regards to the summit to tell her, to give her a little bit of feedback of what they like, what they didn't like, and all that good stuff, she sent them a discount coupon for her services. So she built a connection through the summit, she launched a summit, and she built her list, and then afterwards, she wanted to gather some data and also turn those uh, leads into clients. So she sent out the coupon, and then she sent out the opportunity to sign up for a call um, to see if they wanted to cash the coupon or to see which was the service that would serve them the best, and a handful of them claimed their discount. So I think she booked about 12 calls, and I think like, I think it was like four, four or six who converted, so it was anywhere from like 35 to 50% of them converted um, into paying clients. Way number nine. So this client, what she did, was super it's definitely something that not a lot of people talk about online because it's very uh what's the word it's very different like we totally took a different approach to this we didn't do facebook groups or anything like that she actually posted ads on the canadian version of craigslist and she signed up for local networking events and she like got got a spot in the networking events and she had a booth and she had pamphlets about the specific clinics or workshops that she was doing and she wanted to feel she wanted to have four or five people into the workshops so through attending this um networking events where she had a booth set up and she was 
uh, interacting with people and reaching out to anyone who was interested in, in her clinics in the Facebook ad, she was able to book, I think it was like almost four clinics with like four to five people. So again, a super strange way that not a lot of coaches are teaching or talking about, but it works because there are so many ways to book clients. We just need to show up for that, test it, tweak it, see if it works and move like the strategy around. Um, obviously, posting an ad on Craigslist may not be ideal for you or your business model, but I just want you to see that there are so many ways to do this, right? Um, so Stephanie, if you're still here, tell me if you're kind of like understanding a little bit more. And for anyone else watching, let me know if you're following or if this is confusing to you. Obviously, I worked through this with my clients, so I like I understand the stories clearly, but if you've never heard this before, it may be a little confusing for you, so let me know. And last but not least, um, my client, Judy, Judy, which is a fake name, she says, yes, I'm understanding a little more. Okay, beautiful. And then if you have any other questions, just post them in the comments and I'll answer them after the live stream. Lori says, I thought of doing a local online ad. Yeah, I mean, it worked for her and it works for people, you know? Um, I think a lot of times we like overthink it and we're like, is this the right thing? Should we be doing this? Is this what's gonna work? And I think it's just a matter of knowing like, it may, we just have to try it out, right? Um, so I think if you've had the desire to do it, why not try it out? You never know who's going to see it. You never know who's going to reach out. You never know who's going to convert into a client. Um, I honestly was in awe when this happened. She's like, I'm just posting um, on the Canadian version of Craigslist, and I'm just going to this networking event, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's like not something I've ever heard of because that's just not the way I do it. But we like tweaked a few things on her marketing and the way she was approaching it and, and her ads um, on the Canadian correct list and stuff. And it worked really freaking well. So everything works if we work it. I guess that's like the message of the story. Like if you're like, how do I book clients? It's not like which way works. Every way works. If you talk to a lot of entrepreneurs online, which I do, I have a lot of entrepreneurial friends, everyone's doing something different and it's working for them because they were working that right um some people are like facebook groups don't work and it's like are you working them um facebook ads don't work are you working them and it, it really depends on what you want right like if you don't want to invest a lot of money then maybe facebook ads it's not your way to to go because they are very pricey and there's a lot that goes behind it right um if you don't have a lot of time because you're still working your nine to five, maybe your Facebook group strategy is not working and we need to do something different. Maybe like the LinkedIn strategy that my other client was doing where she just had a system where she just went boom, boom, boom. And it was just all strategized. This client was actually moving across country and she just had a newborn baby and she was able to make 11 K in her second month of working together because she kept going with the strategy. It was awesome. So, Last, Talina says, yes, you have to work it in order to get results. I approve of it. Absolutely. freaking lutely <laughs> There's going to be a lot of ups and downs in the process of getting the client, but that doesn't mean that you stop believing in your strategy. Hi, Jenny. Welcome. Okay, so last, last way for this specific live stream that one of my clients have a client. So, this client, what she did is she moved past her business paralyzation and her fears. So she was really stuck. Like she had been in business for a little bit and then she kind of like fell off the wagon for months and months and months. She had made a couple sales and then something happened in her business that she just couldn't move forward. So for this client, it was a lot of internal work to get her back into the game, to get her out um, into the world, making her visible and stuff. But when she was able to do that, what we did is we reignited her tiny list. She had a tiny email list. Um, and the strategy that we put together was we're going, we promoted um, a very low cost passive income product that was super popular for her. And we just got back. Think about this too. When you stop your business for a long time, it's kind of like you're starting from zero um, because you have to like, 
get the trust of your community again you have to get like consistent again like it's really hard to start and stop to start and stop that's why i really preach consistency um because starting momentum takes so much more energy than just pushing through consistently so anyway so she had stopped we came back we launched a low-cost passive income product she didn't really sell that many of them but the whole thing was to funnel the people who got that passive income product into a call um, and we had created a new six one on one six week one on one coaching program. So out of the handful of people who bought the passive income product, what she did was that she upsold them to that call, and then from that call, one of them booked uh, her as a client within a couple of weeks of us working together. So again, guys, a million trillion quadrillion ways. I'm not saying that right. I know to book clients, um, it may not always feel like the easiest thing to do because there is definitely a lot of effort and a lot of persistence, persistence that we have to get, that we have to implement at all times, but the possibilities are endless. <laughs> like if you don't like Facebook groups, you don't have to do Facebook groups. If you don't like Facebook ads, you don't have to do Facebook ads. If you don't like the online world, you don't have to have an online business. Um, that's just the way it is. Like. There are like a vast river of ways that you can find clients. We just need to figure out what's going to work with your personality, what's going to work with your strengths, what's going to work with your lifestyle. We have to think about that, right? Like how much time do you have? How outgoing are you? Like there's so many things that go into it. And then once we decide that that's the way that we're gonna go to with, we keep going. We keep going and we keep going and we keep going because if we quit at that first no or if we quit when things feel hard, then that is just like keeping you five feet away from your client. Um, I don't know if any of you have read uh, Think and Grow Rich, but he talks about this story where these people were looking for gold and then they stopped looking for gold and then someone else took the gold because they didn't dig five feet deeper. Like if they would have dig just a little bit deeper, they would have find the freaking gold. And I think I always relate this to client acquisition because a lot of times we quit five feet away from gold. And it's like we just need to keep going because we never know when we're going to touch that gold. So that is it for today. Does anyone have any questions? I'm just going to stay for a minute or two. Um, to see if you guys have questions. The last thing I have to say is, this is the last week that I am promoting my business building sessions for free, like 100% free. I usually charge $350 for the sessions. I'd be promoting them for free for like one week, I think, one or two weeks. This is the last week I'm doing it. I've done about like five or six of them and they have been amazing so if you need custom tailor support for your business you need a little bit of coaching this is your opportunity to do that yes we are definitely going to talk about what working together would look like if we're a good fit and if it's the right time for you but no pressure at all um, I would say like 96% of the session is just us coaching on your business figuring out what your next strategies are um, what you need to be doing, what's blocking you, and all that good stuff. So I'm going to post a link to that. And just remember that this is the last week to get that for free. I'm probably not going to be promoting them. I'm definitely 100% not going to be promoting them for months and months and months on end. So I will let you guys go. I hope that these made sense to you. And I hope that the overall message that you get from this is that there are so many ways to book clients. So don't get stuck in a cookie cutter approach that doesn't work for you. If you didn't understand any stories and you want me to expand on it a little bit more, please let me know in the comments section because I will be, I'll gladly explain them a little bit more. Like I said, they're like second nature to me because I went through the whole process, but I would understand why it could be confusing to someone who didn't go through that process. So that's it for me. I will see you on Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern when we're doing free live um, confidence and business coaching. Make sure that you come in here on Wednesday and you post on the coaching thread what you need support with and I will quickly and easily and tactfully answer your questions. Have an awesome rest of your day and we will talk soon. Bye everyone.